Welcome back to the 200 challenge. We have found 221 kilos so far, meaning we're ahead of the target. That's really good. I'm really happy about that. Today, I'm in the south of Sweden, in a place called Lead Projects together with Robin here. We're gonna look into the roll cage and how we get this into the car. Me, personally, I take a lot of pride in doing stuff myself. I also take a lot of pride in knowing what I don't know, like building a roll cage. Robin, on the other hand, he's just about as good at this as you can get, so I'm leveraging him to get this work done. Why a roll cage? Safety first, of course, which is also the name of this episode. The other aspect of the roll cage is that once I get this into the car, I can utilize the plastic doors, which saves a lot of weight with the car. So this episode, we're gonna look into the design aspects of the roll cage, how we're doing it, what the ins and the outs are. I'm also gonna cover the plastic doors and why I'm doing that. Safety first. Let's have a first look at what we've done here. My aspiration with this car is not that this is gonna be a competition car. This is gonna be my dream car and the fastest car that, that I can ever build based on a 964. That means we haven't really designed this cage for a, a special regulation, just to be the safest, best cage you can possibly be. Uh, so this, this is how it looks. It's not completely done yet. We, uh, we've only covered one of the side struts so far on the door, there's gonna be another one coming here, going out like this and then going up like this. Uh, we've done a, a mix of, of two different techniques here. Uh, if you strictly follow the regulations, at least how they are here in Sweden, you have to mix, MIG weld everything essentially on the cage and, and one of the reasons for that regulation is that it's easier to do that and they want to have consistency. We're going to MIG weld here and we're going to TIG weld here because that will be a, a nicer way of welding it and the end result will look much nicer on this. And also I, I know that Robin is an expert at this so there will be no aspects of not really covering all bases with this. Uh, still have some work to do here. There's one cross member and the roof still missing. Uh, as I said, the one here is still missing. Let's look into some of the, the details here and, and discuss why we did it the way we did. So this is how we've attached the roll cage to the main chassis beam of the car here. We have the front mounting point here where the cage comes down here. We have the center by the B pillar here. And then we have the, the rearward one here. So one of the aspects of this is that this point here needs to be in front of the, the main suspension mount, which is just here on the 964. So we get a nice mount just into the chassis beam here. And this goes up to the cage, goes down here, goes down here. We have the cross in the back where the seat belts are gonna go here. Uh, and in Sweden, you need to have two sets of seat belt for the annual inspection. Since this car is gonna be road legal, so we're gonna use this as well. And that's just about it for here. So the process of getting this done is typically, and most people do the same here. Uh, you start with the main loop here which is an integral piece that you bend and you try to get it as close to the chassis as you can. Once, once this one is in and you welded this one in place, you go for the forward going loops. Another aspect of this is you want this loop here to be as close to, to the A pillar here as you can, not to impede the, the vision of the driver here. So this is how this looks here. It's really up close to it. You, you can Make some tack welds here on the inside to stiffen it up a little bit if you want. Here's another aspect I wanted to cover. So as we discussed exactly how to do the, the cage on this one here, this, this is one of the things that people discuss a lot, whether you should have this one or whether you, whether you shouldn't have this one. If you don't do what we've done here with cutting the bottom of the panel here, this one becomes a little bit of a hazard for your knees here. So what we agreed on doing here is cutting the bottom part of this one out and going in for the vents here because I'm going to have a different ventilation and a different fresh air system in this one anyway. So I wanted to get it really slick and integrated with this. I wanted to have this beam because to, to me this feels as a good safety. If someone hits the car from the side then you have a connection between this beam and this beam here to, to really make it as rigid as possible. So when we cut this, this piece out of it here, it really gets only marginally lower and closer to your knees 
than what you would have if, if you just left this, this part of the instrumentation intact. So Robin is uh, welding away. It, it's pretty fun watching someone doing the TIG welding because it's completely silent. And, and the welds get, get so precise and, and so neat compared to when I do my MIG welding at home and just, just full chaos all the time. Yes, so now we started some welding here on the rope cage on this side. Uh, of course this car is beautiful to weld in because it's been as dipped and uh, everything is clean and empty so it's uh, nothing we have to cover up and nothing we have to be very careful about when welding so it's just straightforward so we started welding the plates to the bottom it's double three millimeter steel plates uh, on every corner of the roll cage and then uh, just started tick welding this side of the roll case as you can see yeah. So, and one thing uh, we normally think about when working with the roll cage is to keep the temperatures under control. So we, we weld a little bit here and then we move to another, another part of the, of the roll cage just to make sure that we don't put too much heat in, in one place. So for example, you can start welding the upside of, of a tube and then you go to the other side and do the, the upside there as well. And then you can go underneath and take a bit slower tempo without all the heat being left there since you since the last time you welded there. As Robin is uh, finishing up the roll cage, I'm back home and I, I need to work a little bit on the doors here. So what I need to do on the doors is really transfer the handles uh, as well as the, uh, the latch mechanism to, to close up the doors. I need to, I've taken these out on the first door already, so I need to transplant these into the plastic doors so that I can close them and lock the doors and do all those necessary things. Uh, before I started, I weighed both of the doors. They're 31 kilos each. So, so as I now translate these components to the new door, I'm going to reweigh the new doors using the new components. So, let's take this apart. So we need to get the, uh, the door mechanism out. Uh, the window is now in the way, so this, this doesn't work out at all. So I have a little trick here. I have my little tinker box here, which uh, doesn't really contain anything else than, than a 12 volt battery and a little switch. Uh, so I'm gonna hook this up to the, the incoming connection of the door here. And then I'm just gonna maneuver it to, to get the window up. I've connected ground to pin number one and uh, the other one to pin number seven. So, window goes up. Got all the valuables out, which is the handles with the locks and the latch mechanism to, to close up the door. So that's all good, got that out. This door here was the one I did first, took me three, four hours. So this door clearly outsmarted me. This one I outsmarted because it only took me 45 minutes to do that. So practice makes perfect, I guess. And it's really tricky this job if you do it the wrong way. If you know how to do it, it's really easy. Car is finally back in the garage. It took like five, six weeks to get it back with the acid dip and now the, the cage build. So that's the reason why the videos haven't been very frequent lately. Uh, I think Robin did a fantastic job here. He, he did uh, help me with uh, loading the car and my good friend Emil here, he helped me with unloading the car. So we had a little bit of fun with that. It's, it's cool to see a workshop that is so extremely well equipped with even a gantry crane in the top, that, that's really cool. Let's have a look at how the cage turned out. And after that, we're gonna test mount the new doors, test mount the seat and the steering wheel, and then see that everything fits the, the way I want it to. Let's have a look at the cage first. With all these things, you can do them in different ways. I'm gonna show you how this one turned out in the, the final version of this. And uh, let's see what you think about this. So regulation states that you have to have two cross members here to, to protect yourself. 
I'm not following a particular regulation, but uh, somehow I try to be close anyway. So we wanted to make these tight here to, to ease the entry and exit of the, vest, of the uh, car here. Uh, still giving a little bit more protection for the body on this side. Um, we have a diagonal on the inside here with a cross diagonal on the other side on the back to, to really make this a stiff box if, if something happens. In the ceiling, I got a full cross so that if I land upside down, this, this will really keep me from crushing in on my head. I think I said so in the last episode, we cut the bottom piece of the dash away so that this does not become a, a knee crusher. Another thing I asked Robin to do here was, you see here, this is really the meat of the car here. I asked him to extend a beam here out to the suspension towers. So you see I have a beam here that really stiffens up the suspension towers on both sides here. In the back, the, uh, the mount is already just next to the suspension towers because this is the meat of the car here and the suspension tower is just behind here. So those are the, uh, the, the aspects of the roll cage and what we try to do here. It's become time to, to try out the doors on the car, see how, how good of a fit we got. So I'm just going to assemble them on. door is on, but as you can see, it doesn't close. It opens fine, but there's no closing. And, and this is, I think this is typical. I think it happens all the time. The door stop. I need to figure out a solution for, for the door stop. And uh, either you cut this or you make a hole here and I'm gonna make a hole in the door. So I bolted the, the plastic door on just, just to have a look at, at how it seems. And of course, at first glance, the gap is terrible. It is so much up here. It is so much here. And it looks like the, the door needs to go in this way and this way at the same time. So I'm gonna tinker around with it for a while and see if I get anywhere. Yeah, tinker tinker, I, I don't think I'm going to get further with this today. The gap is still absolutely terrible all the way around. It looks like the door is too small, which I don't know how that happens, but I guess I'm going to have to build the door up a little bit. It also hits the cage here in the front, so uh, I need to do a little bit of work there. I've come to my final mock-up here, got the door on, got a steering wheel in, got my old seats in. I put them without the sliders in so that I can uh, really get low and get a little bit more space in the top. Got my seat belts in as well. Uh, I think the recommendation is if your mounting point is more than 45 centimeters from the chair, you're supposed to cross the belts. I'm just below 45. so. Seating position maybe not completely final yet, so I'll, I'll see where I end up if I cross the belts or not. It's a long time ago since I was sitting in this car, and ah, it feels pretty good. I got space, got my steering wheel where it needs to be, got my pedals where they need to be. Let's have a look at what we concluded today. You got it, it's scoring time. So the steel doors, 31 kilos each, meaning 62 kilos in total. The plastic doors, they're a little bit lighter at five and a half, but this doesn't cut at all this. That's why we spent the time at taking the locks out, which makes it more accurate. Now we're at six and a half, one kilo on the locks. We also need a window, otherwise it will be too windy. So with the window, we're actually up at seven and a half kilos, which means 15 kilos on the plastic doors in total. We've saved 47 kilos on the door and that is amazing. I can't believe it. On the other hand, we put a lot of goodies into the car with the steel and the, the cage and all that. So I don't have a really good way of measuring the car to the extent that I've bought an intercomp four point measuring system that it's on its way here. So, so in the future, it's gonna be a lot better with weighing the entire car. I'm gonna estimate the cage to 22 kilos. So out of the 47 we saved, we consumed 22. So we saved 25 kilos going to the plastic doors, making the car safe. 
We did some cool stuff today and I'm psyched to be sitting back in the car in a pretty long time. We looked at the steel doors, weighed them, took out the necessary parts. We're going to put them into the plastic doors. Didn't have time to do that today because I need to do other stuff as well. Uh, we looked at the roll cage. Thanks Robin for all the help with that. I'm really psyched with, with the result we got. In total we found 25 kilos of weight saving when we counter in the, uh, the weight of the cage. So pretty psyched about that. Started the episode with 221 kilos weight saving identified. Now we're up to 246. So not bad. It's going to be a fast one this in the end. If you like what I'm doing, subscribe to my channel. Next episode, we're going to do some funky carbon fiber stuff. It's going to be really cool. See you then.